Hi there, in this video I again wanted to talk about log models, but sort of another interpretation is the one we've talked about thus far. So just reminding ourselves of what a log model means, it means that I've got like a logged dependent variable, log y, and I'm regressing that on a whole bunch of sort of logged independent variables. So my model is log y is equal to alpha plus beta 1 times log x1 plus let's say beta 2 times log of x2. So that's the sort of case where I've got two independent variables, but it will serve us well for this particular purpose. It's easy to generalize this to sort of the situation where you've got sort of p independent variables. So let's say we were interested in finding out what y was. So we've got log y at the moment. We want to just get y on its own. How do we get that? Well, we need to basically do the inverse of a log to get it out. And that means that I have to take the number e and raise it to the sort of power of everything on my right hand side. So the right hand side now becomes e to the power alpha plus beta 1 times log of x1 plus beta 2 times log of x2. Okay, well, can I simplify that further? Well, I know that essentially when the powers add, that is the same as multiplying the numbers if I've got the same base. So I can sort of write this out as e to the alpha times e to the beta 1 log of x1 times e to the beta 2 times log of x2. Now I'm going to use another sort of a log rule, which is, or a log rule rather, which is that a times log b is the same as log b to the power a. So using that in our sort of equation, we have that y is equal to e to the alpha times e to the log x1 to the power beta 1 times e to the log of x2 to the power beta 2. Okay, it's looking quite complicated. How do we simplify this a bit further? Well, it's by recognizing that e to the power log of, let's say, x is the same as x. That's just a sort of simple log rule. So finally, we can sort of arrive at a form which looks a little bit simpler, which is y is equal to e to the alpha times x1 to the power beta 1 times x2 to the power beta 2. So this is another sort of reason why log models are quite attractive. And it's as a result of the sort of the fact that we've actually assumed non-linearity in our effect of our independent variables. In specifically, uh, in specific rather, we are trying to estimate the degree of this non-linearity. We're trying to estimate this beta 1 and beta 2, which basically tell us the sort of non-linear effect of variable x1 on y. So, and, and that's a sort of very realistic assumption in many practical situations where it's sort of an unrealistic assumption to assume that variable x just has a sort of linear response in regards to its effect on variable y. But there's also a sort of another side to this, which may or may not be a good thing depending on your situation. And it's to do with the non-linearity with regard to the two independent regressors. So in specific, we actually are multiplying x1 times x2 to the power of something, right? So the effect of variable x1 on y depends on the value of x2 at that particular time. So in this context, it's not linear in the sense of x1 has some sort of constant effect on y. Its effect on y depends on the value of x2 because I'm multiplying them together. And this makes sense in a lot of situations. Um, for example, in sort of marketing, if you're developing marketing mixed models, sometimes you might think that advertising works better at times of the year when sales are higher or when prices are lower, right? So advertising has a bigger effect when prices are lower, for example, you might have an idea that that might be the case. In which case, this sort of multiplicative model, which a logged or estimating a log model um, might actually be a sensible thing to do. But the high idea behind estimating log models is that we should always sort of recognize that it is actually a multiplicative structure and that we should sort of think about deeply as to whether that's a good or a sort of bad thing to do depending on the situation. 